Greetings. I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I'm going to be building two things. A crop realmer, which realms crops, obviously, and a VS KFZ 617, which is the odd looking tricycle thing in grey. Both of these are German mine rolling vehicles, and they're both very interesting if you ask me. This is a 172nd scale kit from Tacom, and as the box suggests, you can build two vehicles, which is something I rather like. There's nothing on the back of the box, but it is in white, which is a bit different to the usual brown or grey cardboard. Anyway, Tacom has a few kits like this, some of which are two of the same or similar vehicles, and some different things like this kit. Well, they're both mine rollers, but you know what I mean. You'll notice in the bottom right corner of the box it says the kit was designed by T-Rex Studios in China, and I've never heard of T-Rex, though I do think that's a cool name. I don't really know what kind of partnership Tacom and T-Rex have, but I hope it's a successful one that produces more kits like this. Inside the box we find grey plastic sprues, which is obviously not a surprise. At all. These are very neatly moulded and they look great, very crisp and nice. I was unable to find any defects or moulding errors on these parts and if I had to complain about anything, it would be that there's a lot of sprue gates, especially on the wheels. There's a lot of excess material on the backs of the wheels as well. It's not a real problem at all, it just takes a little bit of extra clipping to remove them. There are of course mould lines and some very minor bits of flash, which is also not a real problem, though it is still worth mentioning. It's just a fact of life for those of us who build plastic model kits. Cleanup is simple and easy, it just takes a little extra time away from gluing the bits of plastic together. The hulls for both of these vehicles come as large, mostly complete separate parts. That does make construction a lot easier, and they're quite nicely detailed. The hull design for the VS KFZ 617 is pretty weird and interesting. Actually both hull types are really quite interesting now that I think of it. The VS has a small turret, so in addition to detonating mines it can also shoot people and defend itself, and that's quite a nicely detailed little part. And it is little. There's also more sprues for that vehicle. This one is mostly wheels, and the little wheel pad things. There are quite a lot of those, and a large portion of the construction time for this vehicle will be in assembling those wheels. It's really fun though, so that's okay. Like I said before, everything here is quite nice and neat. I haven't built a lot of Tacom stuff before, but it feels like this is a nice high quality product, and I don't think I'm incorrect in that assessment. There's also some photo etch. These are just a couple of simple pieces that only require basic bending. In my opinion these parts could have easily been plastic, but they are a nice addition to the kit. Decals are also included, and there's some interesting markings here. I'm not sure what a lot of them are or what they mean, but they do appear in the painting and marking guides, so they're not there for no reason. The instruction booklet is quite good. It's in colour, it's on nice paper, and it's both stapled in the middle and works like a book. And it's a reasonable size. This is great if your workspace is a little bit cramped. Also, and more importantly, the instructions themselves are quite good and easy to understand and follow. This doesn't look like it's going to be an overly complicated build, so the instructions aren't overly complicated either. Makes sense to me. There are some painting and marking guides here, which are, as these things tend to be, kind of basic, and they don't take into account things like highlighting or weathering or anything like that, but they are a good starting point. I also like that they've denoted which of these are actual paint schemes, and which are what if schemes. Most of them are what if, but they are interesting. Very good. Let's start gluing stuff together. I decided, for whatever reason, to start with the Krupp Raumer, though the instructions do say to start with the other vehicle. I guess today I'm a bit of a rebel. The first thing to do is glue both halves of the hulls together, and that's pretty simple. The fit is quite reasonable though there is a bit of a gap at the front of both of these hulls. Nothing too awful and it should be easy enough to fill in. The rear walls come next and this is also quite simple, though I did need to use a bit of pressure. There is a gap at the top of this, but as you can see, that matches with the sides of the hull, so it's meant to be there. Obviously there are two of these, and their construction is identical. The basic hulls are together, but there's still more detail to add, like this platey thing. I've no idea what it is, but it goes on the front of both hulls like so. Well, I guess technically one is the rear. 
Either way, it's easy to place and it looks good. Then into the opening in the top of the hulls, I glue this thing into place. Again, no idea what it is or does, but I do know I had to apply a fair bit of pressure to get it into place. One good whatever that thing is deserves another, as the youth are always saying. So I put another one at the other end of the recess. In the centre we add this I-beam shaped part. This has keying to make positioning it nice and easy. Like with the other parts you'll need to apply some pressure, but it does go in easy enough. I follow this part with a plate that has a round thing and some little bolts. Or maybe they're rivets. Little lumpies, that's what they are. This is yet another easy detail to add. Next comes a triangular piece that goes in here. This isn't hard to place, though my brain really wanted it to be flush with the roof. It shouldn't be, it should sit slightly below roof level. I think that's really more of a me problem. The keying does make sure that you get it right. One of the exhausts goes on next, and it was slightly fiddly to place, mostly because you want to get the thin end mounted in the little hole on the rear wall. Not exactly hard, just a tiny bit more fiddly than the other parts in this build have been. It's looking pretty good so far, if you ask me. And you did ask me, didn't you? No! Yeah, you did. Next, I add headlamps. These are mounted on some brackets and more or less drop right into place. I can imagine it would be pretty easy to break the lamp off the bracket if you're a bit rough when cleaning them up, so do be careful with that. Nobody wants a broken lamp. This thing can then go around the top of the opening in the middle of the hull. This doesn't quite want to fit into place without some pressure, and I had to hold it for a bit, but eventually it stayed where it's meant to stay. I then add the rest of the detail parts, which are the same as some that we've already added. They're just slightly different because they go on the opposite side of the hull. Unsurprisingly, they go on the same as the parts on the other side did. Now that we have two hulls together, it's time to build the mechanism that joins them. We start with these hydraulic ram things. It's worth noting that I am both very sensible and very mature. These parts don't need to be glued, otherwise we wouldn't be able to move them, and we want to move them for sensible times. But I do glue on this half of the bracket connector thingy, whatever you might call it, and I also glue a set of springs on. I did initially put these on wrong, and I was fortunately able to remove them and replace them the correct way up, which is how you see them here. Onto the other half of this assembly I glue another set of springs. These don't have keying like the other ones, so you've got to try and eyeball them into the correct position, which is to say use your eyes to line them up and not use your eyes to move them. Now it's time to connect those two sub-assemblies. This is a bit fiddly, mostly because the parts should be left so they're movable. It would probably be a bit easier if you just glued it all together, but sometimes movable parts are fun, so I could jigger it all together. Doing this on the work surface definitely proved to be easier than trying to do this while holding everything up. First, the top part over the middle bit here is glued into place. I'm obviously being careful to avoid getting glue on the moving parts. Then we add a similar part to the other end, also being careful with the glue. It now moves freely, and we can have hours and hours of fun doing this. Hours and hours of fun. Now it's time for photo etch. This is pretty simple as far as photo etch goes, and you just have to make some simple bends. These are helped a lot by the lines in the parts. I use the side of the hole where this is going to go as a sort of guide to see if I've got the parts bent to the correct angle, and once I have what looks to be the right shape, I glue the part on over the muffler. Because this is metal, I'm using super glue. I like to use the cheaper super glue from the supermarket that comes in a bottle with a little brush. Makes application easy, it's also cheaper than hobby specific super glue, and it's the same thing. I think I got these in the right position, or at least something close enough. As you can see, I've only installed one of these at this point, because I didn't really feel like doing photo etch on stream when I was building this, but I did eventually put them all on. Next, I join the two holes together. I glue the steering connecting mechanism to one hull, which is quite easy to do, and then I glue it to the other hull in much the same way. I think this would have been a bit easier had I left the part to bond with the first hull for a while before trying to attach it to the second. If I was to do this again, I'd have worked on the wheels while waiting for that first connection to bond, but that's not what I did. I still got everything together, it was just a bit more fiddly than it really had to be. 
Anyway, it's time for the wheels. You can see the remains of the excess plastic on the inside of this wheel here. There's a fair bit of it. Fortunately, you don't have to get this perfectly neat in order to get the wheel together. You just have to clip the big bits off. Then we add the inner wheel part, which is really easy. There are guide pins here, but I don't think they were totally necessary. The way these parts are shaped make it so that you couldn't really put it on wrong unless you put it on backwards. I apply pressure and the wheel is together. The inner part should sit slightly higher than the pad on the outside. And there we have it, one wheel. Some might say that it looks really good, and I would be one of those people. Before we can attach those wheels, we need the axially wheelie mounty bit. I'm sorry if my usage of the correct technical term confuses you, but that is what it's called. These are easy to install, but do make sure that you've got them on nice and straight, or you'll end up with wobbly wheels, which isn't ideal. There are two different parts here, one with a short axle and one with a longer one. Being that either end is the same, it doesn't matter which end of the vehicle you put these on, as long as you've got axles of the same length next to each other. I expect the reason for this is having one set of wheels sit out a bit further from the vehicle increases the area the wheels touch for mine clearing. It makes sense that we would then put the wheels on, and these simply slot onto the ends of the axle bits. These are all the same, so it doesn't matter which wheel goes where. Just try to make sure they're all nice and straight. And there we have it. A crop Raumer complete with the photo etch exhaust guard things. I told you I got them into place eventually. This is of course a really cool and interesting looking vehicle, but before we can watch it spin around and around, there's an entire other mine roller to put together. The VS KFZ 617. We start with this odd looking hull, and onto the sides of it I glue these boxes. There's one of these for either side, and they're both different sizes. The guide holes in the sides of the hull should help you to be sure which part goes on which side. Next come some lifting brackets, or at least that's what I guess these are. Guide nubs help with positioning these properly, just be sure to use the correct parts for either side. And obviously the correct parts for the front and rear. They are all different, but if you're paying attention it's pretty easy to avoid messing this up. Now that's done, it would be a really good time to make some wheels. Two lots of wheel assembly in one video? I know, I spoil you guys. First, the back part of the center wheel bit goes on, and then onto either side of that I glue these… link… things? Whatever you might call them. There's keying for these and they're pretty easy to place. These parts are identical, so it doesn't matter which side you put either of them on, as long as there's one on each side. You don't want to put them both on one side, because that would be wrong and the instruction police would pay you a visit. Now onto the pad… things. The big chunky bits that press down on the mines to make them go boom. While there are a lot of these, they're not especially tricky to put on. They're all identical, and you just need to glue them together with the wheel bit sandwiched between them. There's a fair few of these, so it did end up being a little bit time consuming, but the result is rather good, and if you ask me, it's a really interesting looking wheel design. And as you can see, I made two of them, because that's how many the instructions said to make and there's no parts to make more. We follow this with yet another wheel. This is, as you can see, kind of a smaller version of the previous wheels. This is for the steering part of the vehicle, which is a kind of tricycle design. The parts for this are obviously different, but it goes together pretty much the same way as the larger wheels. It's just a tiny bit more fiddly owing to the smaller size. That said, it's not really difficult, it's just a bit time consuming and repetitive. That's okay though, it's worth it because the result is rather good. Next comes the, uh, holder for the steering wheel. Obviously I'm not sure what to call it. That's nothing new. But it does go together nice and easy, and the keying makes sure that everything goes together with the proper alignment. Why not then join that to the hull? I found I had to apply a fair bit of pressure to get this to go together, and I expect it would stay in position with friction alone. It looks like it's designed to do that. However, I chose to add glue just to be sure. I don't feel much need to have this steering be workable. What I do feel a need for though, is the top of the hull. I make sure there's enough glue to satisfy the glue god, and then plop the part right into place. It fits quite well, though I did have to apply a small amount of pressure to ensure there weren't any gaps. And then we've got most of the hull together, though there is still a big gaping hole in the front, and that just won't do. 
it offers no protection for the crew. The front of the hull pretty much just drops right into place, again a little pressure to ensure as good a bond as possible, and it's on. I've heard that mine roller crews like to have at least a little bit of light for night driving, so I add some headlamps. These are moulded on brackets like with the Krupp Raumer, and they drop into place into these little slots at the front of the vehicle. They don't look like they're perfectly straight, but maybe it's my eyes that are wonky. Either way they're in place and they look fine. I add the wheels next. The instructions did want this done a bit earlier, but I chose to leave it until the hull was together, figuring it might be a bit easier to put the hull together without the wheels being in the way. Once the wheels are in place it's looking a lot more complete, but there's still a few things to add, like these covers for the vents. They kind of look like tables with very short legs. They're not though, don't be fooled. They go into place here over these vents. This vehicle also has photo etch. It's a bit different than on the Krupp Raumer, but it's just as easy to do. We make some simple bends that are made easy by the lines that have been scribed into the part, and then, again using super glue because plastic cement doesn't like bonding metal, we glue them onto the vents here at the rear, like so. These really could have been plastic parts, and it would have been ever so slightly easier to install them. But they do look good, and they weren't hard to bend or install, so I can't complain too much. Some of you might have noticed the hole in the roof of this vehicle. That's for the turret. This turret is very small, and that does make things a bit fiddly, but it is fairly easy to put together. I start by putting the hatch into place, and this was a bit of a tight fit, so I had to use a fair bit of pressure to get it mounted properly. A little bit of glue will make sure that it stays there. The bottom of the turret can then go into place and this fits really easily, almost nothing to it. The mantlet more or less just drops right into place. There's a couple of little knobs that should be on the upper side of this so don't put it on upside down, or else. Or else what? I don't know, you'll have an upside down mantlet and people will laugh at you. A pair of teeny tiny machine guns comes next, and these are really small. I certainly recommend being very careful when removing these from the sprues and cleaning them up. These are both different lengths, and I'm not sure that it matters which side you put either barrel on, but they fit very nice and easy into the two holes on the turret front. A little nudging so they're not pointing off in weird random directions and the turret is finished. I join the turret to the hull using the simple locking tab mechanism, and the fit is a little bit tight, but I don't think that's a bad thing. With that we have a nice looking VS KFZ 617 in 70 second scale from Tacom completed. And we've also got a Krupp Raumer also in 70 second scale from Tacom completed. I bet you were worried I'd forgotten about that one. Well Herbert Erpaderp never forgets. Except when he does forget, I suppose. Anyway, I think these models look really great side by side, and of course individually. I'm very happy with them. Both are rather interesting and unique vehicles, and while they're real they do kind of look like something that you might see in Warhammer 40k or something like that, particularly the VS. I'm led to believe that the VS designation means that this was a prototype, and it has been preserved at Kubinka, which is really cool. I'd love to go and see it one day. We're not really here to talk about that though. I think these models are a great representation of these vehicles. They're crisp, neat, and well detailed. I'm obviously no expert on mine rollers, or anything really, so I can't point out how accurate they are and where exactly they might differ from the real thing, but I think these models are pretty good. And they look accurate enough to me through my non-rivet countery eyes. They were both fun and fairly simple to build. I mean I have built easier models, but I've also built much more difficult ones. I would say this kit is fairly beginner friendly. Even the photo etch, which only requires some very simple bends and are guided by the lines in the part, is pretty simple to do. This kit was pretty quick to put together, especially considering it contains two entire vehicles. I got it done over the course of a couple of relatively short streams, for a total of about 5 hours build time, keeping in mind that I do get distracted and mess about and have a lot of other things to do while I'm building. I'm sure without all of the distractions of streaming you could get it done a lot quicker. The most time consuming part was the wheels for the VS KFZ 617, and that wasn't really all that bad. There wasn't a whole lot of cleanup required and pretty much everything went together nice and easily. It was quite a pleasant experience, and I'm rather excited to start on some of the other Tacom 72nd scale kits I've got in my stash. 
I'm not sure if I'm going to paint these vehicles soon or not, and I will almost certainly do them separately, but I do like the painting guide in the instructions. It's nice that they point out which schemes were used on the real thing, and which are what-if schemes. Not that I'm overly concerned about painting everything as it actually was, I mean I did paint a panther pink and a Pershing purple, but it's still nice to know. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to put those in the comment section below. If you've built one of these or any other cool models and you would like to share, why not drop by our Discord community and show us some pictures. If you want to watch me build kits like this live on stream, head on over to my Twitch channel and give me a follow. The link is in the description below. And if you've not already done so, why not subscribe, follow, ring the bell, become a patron if you would like to see my videos a bit early, or maybe just come say hi on Discord or Twitch when I'm live. Links to all of my things are in the description below, and as always, I shall return soon. So until then, be excellent to each other, have an awesome day, and thanks for watching. Farewell.